From time to time, you will need to adjust the derailleur gears on your bike. And it can sound a bit tricky if you don't know what you're doing. But actually, once you understand the basics of the hardware itself, it's very easy and something that anyone can do at home. So in today's video, we're gonna do this with a SRAM derailleur. But fear not, if you have a Shimano one on your bike, we've already made that video. So you can check that one out in the description underneath. Okay, so before we get started making any adjustments to this bike whatsoever, let's just take you through what the SRAM derailleurs look like. Now the function and the form is exactly the same really as most other derailleurs on the market, but they do have a few small features that set them aside. Now the basics look pretty similar to anything else. You have a lower cage unit, known as the lower cage, and it has two wheels on there. These could be called guide wheels or jockey wheels and sometimes pulleys. They rotate on little bearings and the responsibility of this cage is basically to take up the slack in the chain when you're in a higher gear. A higher gear means smaller sprockets, so there's a bit of an abundance of chain, and that is sprung to take up that slack. And accordingly, when you go into a lower gear, which means using more chain, it goes the opposite way to accommodate for that. Now this lower cage is heavily sprung and it actually has a clutch design. Now, unlike the Shimano one that you can turn on and off, the SRAM one you can't turn on and off, but it does have a locking feature, which means it's really easy to adjust and also means it's super easy to remove your rear wheel. It's a genius feature and it's exclusive to SRAM. So we'll show you how to work that a bit later in the video. Now, as far as shifting goes, it has the same parallelogram style design as you've seen on most derailleurs. This correlates to when you're doing the clicks with your shifter, it will move across and enable the chain to derail from sprocket to sprocket. And then there's three main adjustments and a cable clamp. Cable clamp obviously just clamps that cable that you're operating at the shifter end. And the three adjustments, two of them are your limits for smaller sprocket and your larger sprocket, just to make sure the derailleur can limit the movement that it has. And the other one is the B tension, also known as the B screw. This one is responsible for the height of these guide wheels in relation to that cassette. You need to have this sprocket correctly adjusted for clean shifting. And we're gonna show you exactly how to do it. It's dead simple. Okay, so firstly, let's have a bit of a system reset to make sure everything is ready before you can make any adjustments. So let's go up to the shifter first. Now this is the barrel adjuster. Its job is to take up any slack in the system. You can sometimes hear this referred to as cable stretch, but it's not technically cable stretch because the metal cable doesn't stretch. But you do get slack in the system as the outer housing and the sheets and stuff can bed into place, so you get small amounts of movement in that system. It's a simple screw-in uh, barrel, basically, and it compensates for that slack. So I want you to screw it back into the shifter, basically giving it more slack. So you might find the outer housing here moves around a bit. Now just have a quick double check, make sure everything feels smooth. Does the shifter feel smooth? Uh, if it doesn't, give it a little bit of spray lube on the inside there. Um, you might need to replace the inner cable itself. If that's something you do need to do, before you go any further, check the video out that's in the description underneath this one, and it shows you how to replace a cable on a derailleur, and also deals with a little bit of generic information about indexing your gears, but we will cover that with this particular video. Now have a bit of a sense check when you're up at the front end here. Make sure the cables and the hoses are all long enough that your steering is not constricted and none of them are pulling on anything. If any of those hoses are being crimped or you know uh, kinked around adversely or they're being pulled on, that will hamper your gear shifting and your brakes and other things on the bike. So just do a sense check and make sure everything is operating smoothly. And just before we get onto the actual derailleur itself, just have a quick sense check around your transmission. Make sure that the actual cranks rotate freely as they should do, and make sure that there's no stiff links or any obvious damage to your chainring, your chain, or your rear sprockets, uh, which is also known as the cassette. Assuming this is all good, let's get started. Now, first things first is to make sure that the derailleur is aligned correctly. 
So get yourself in a position, maybe on a stool or something similar, low down, and get behind the bike. Now, if you've got massive tires on your bike, this actually can be quite hard. And it might be easy, for example, if you've got a fat bike or you've got plus size tires, to actually remove the rear tire from the bike. You'll need the wheel in there, of course, to make this adjustment because that's where your gears are situated. However, on this bike, I can just about see, so we're gonna make do with this. Now, I'm using a line of sight. I'm looking at the derailleur. I wanna make sure that the derailleur itself is completely, like hangs completely vertically underneath that small sprocket. It's really important that it's nice and straight here. Now do note that if your derailleur is an old one, it's been bashed a few times, the lower cage could be a bit bent. So just pay attention there. And also pay attention to the hanger that the derailleur bolts to on the bike. That could also be bent. Now, if any of those things is a bit of a problem, you will need to tackle that at this point because you won't get clean shifting if it's not aligned. It's that simple. Now to make that sort of adjustment, there's a few specific tools, but you can get away with using an adjustable spanner. If you want to see me using an adjustable spanner to do exactly that, the video where I fix up an old shed bike essentially is in the description underneath. And that was really bent and the derailleur itself was bent and I manipulated it by hand and got it working perfectly. Uh, so you can check that video out and it'll give you some other tips on doing up some knackered components as well. Just because they're knackered, it doesn't mean you can't keep using them. Anyway, I digress, back onto this. So now we're looking at the derailleur, it's hanging and it's hanging straight underneath that bottom sprocket. But we wanna check that it's correctly aligned as well. Now this is where your limit screws come in. Now note, there's two screws here. Now depending on the model year of your particular derailleur, it might have a crosshead screw there, or like this one, it might have an Allen key, in which case it's a three millimeter. Now there's two screws here, one correlates to the lower gears, which is your bigger sprocket, and one correlates to the higher gear, which we want to adjust, which is the smaller sprocket. Now note here, as I adjust it, you can see that sprocket moving around. You wanna get it until it's directly underneath that smallest sprocket. Now make sure you move around a little bit to get the best vantage point, because you wanna be completely in line. This is why I said the tire can get in the way here. So if the tire is a problem, it might serve you to get rid of the tire to make this process an easier one. Now, if you're struggling to make this adjustment and you're finding the derailleur is not reacting enough, there might still be too much cable tension on the system. So in which case, you want to undo or loosen the cable clamp. Now, again, depending on the derailleur, this could be a four millimeter. If it's really old, it could be a five millimeter. On this case, I need a Torx T25 in here. So I'm just gonna loosen this off and you can see the cable and now is nothing to do with it. So there's no cable tension affecting the derailleur. Now, if you do this, you might find when you undo the bolt, the derailleur naturally just moves a fraction. It might just be a couple of millimeters, in which case you found the first bit of the problem. Now, return to making the adjustment on the lower part here until the derailleur is completely in line. Now you can just check that the derailleur functions freely by cycling the bike through the gears and manually manipulating the derailleur. Be careful where you put your hands, but you can use your thumb on the parallelogram to just push the derailleur through a few of the gears as you're cycling through using your hand on the pedal. Take your time with this and you'll, you'll get an idea. You'll be able to see if the chain is naturally gonna drop back down again when you release your hand from there. The derailleur should just allow the chain to pop back down onto that smaller sprocket. If that's good, then now's the time to put that cable tension back on. Now it's really important to say when you're pulling the inner cable through the system here, you don't wanna be pulling it tight because the derailleurs have such a small amount of cable pull to operate them or actuate them, you can mess things up here. So you wanna pull the cable until it's taut. Now I recommend using something like a set of needle nose pliers because it makes it really easy to grip and they're really precise. You can use regular pliers, they're not quite as accurate though. Now give the cable a bit of a pull just to make sure everything is in place on the bike. If your cable is externally rooted, you can check the stops just to make sure that the cable housing is sitting into the stops correctly and nothing's gonna sort of give a bit later on. Give the cable a good hard pull and then you wanna gently follow that cable routing round. Be sure to make sure you follow the correct cable routing. It's very slightly different on all derailleurs, but it is generally very obvious. Note how this one, follows around here where the housing enters the derailleur and you can see a little groove that the cable sits into. Now what you do is just pull it taut and then tighten it up with the pinch bolt there, making sure that the cable is correctly clamped. Now with any luck, if you've got this right, the derailleur won't have actually moved, but you will have secured that cable. Now, the first part of indexing your gears here is to see if the derailleur jumps up with one click at the shifter. 
The aim here is one click per gear. This is known as the indexing of your gears. Now try this by cycling the bike along with your hand on the pedal and just changing gears at the shifter. Now this makes sense if you've got your bike in a work stand. If you haven't, you might need a friend to help you here, but honestly a work stand is the best friend for this. It's a third hand essentially, and so useful for many other jobs. Now cycle through, one click at a shifter, and it should hopefully correlate to the derailleur jumping up one gear. If it's not quite managing to jump up, then you need to apply a bit of tension using the barrel adjuster back at the shifter, because that means there's a little bit of slack in the system somewhere, you need to compensate for that. Now hopefully, if you've pulled the cable taut enough, you might just need to add quarter or half a turn, or maybe a full turn. Make the adjustment and try again until the chain jumps up cleanly onto that sprocket, and then select it so you can jump back down again. If you can get that one gear nice and smooth, you're doing well. Next up is to make sure this works correctly for the first four gears or so. And pretty much once you've got those four gears working smoothly going up and down, it's gonna work perfectly the whole way up, but there's still some more adjustments to make a bit later. Now, if your chain was actually over shifting and going up too much, there was too much tension in the system. Now, this means you've actually pulled too much cable through. You pulled it tight, not taut, like I said. So in which case you need to reduce that again. So back to the clamp again, release that cable, and then pull it taut. Remember taut, not tight. That is the key to getting correct shifting. Back to square one again. Shift it one gear until you get it to clean four gears up and down and it's working nicely between them. And now it's time to move on to making your lower adjustment. So lower correlates to the lower gear, which is the biggest sprocket. That is the one at the spokes side of your wheel. Now this one is a crucial one to make because if it's not right, you might not get into that gear to start with, which is annoying because you won't be able to climb up those really steep climbs and use your full range of gears. But worse, if you overshift, there's a chance your chain can get caught between the back of the cassette and the spokes. This can snap your chain, it can damage your wheel, and it can be a real pain to get out again. So make sure you get this one right. Same thing applies, get the bike up into that gear. Now just take caution in case it overshifts, and then using your line of sight, this is where it's really quite difficult if you have a big tire, especially in this combo because you're so far inboard of the wheel and that's almost directly in line with the rim. So it can be very tricky at this point. Again, if you're struggling here, you will need to make sure the tire is not on the bike. Now continue making adjustments to that limit screw until the upper of those wheels is sat directly underneath, completely in line with that biggest sprocket on your rear cassette. Now, before you start playing with the gears, there's one final adjustment you need to make sure of. And this is a perfect time to do it because you make the adjustment only in this gear, in your biggest or your lowest gear. And this is called B-tension. So there's a B-tension screw, this is it, also known as the B-screw. And the responsibility of this is to make sure the derailleur is at the correct height in relation to that cassette. It adjusts, when you look carefully, I'll just make an adjustment here and you can see the top wheel moving up and down slightly in relation to the cassette. Now this is a really important adjustment to make because it can make the difference between your gears shifting smoothly or everything just not working quite right despite everything else being exactly right. This can really affect everything. Now you wanna have 15 millimeters of daylight between the biggest sprocket and this wheel when you are sat on your bike. All right, so that is if you have a suspension bike, it needs to be sagged. So trying to get this can be quite difficult and it ends up actually being about four or five millimeters um, when you're not on the bike like this one is in the stand. But thankfully, SRAM make this little gizmo. They make this for the Eagle like I have on here, which is 12 speed, but they also make it for 11 speed and other derailleurs. So it's a really good tool to have. If you manage to buy your bike, um, if you bought your bike new, it's probably got one of these in with the manuals. If you bought the derailleur new, it will come with one of these. If you haven't got one and it costs a couple of quid, it's well worth getting one from your local bike shop or just ordering one online if you can't source one who are not near a bike shop. And all you do is hook this around the upper jockey wheel there and basically correlate the sprockets to this. And then basically make your adjustment with the B-screw until this is dead in line and you'll have perfect shifting. The name of the game here really is to get that upper wheel as close as you can to the biggest sprocket without fouling on it. The closer it is, the cleaner shifting you'll get coming back down that cassette into your higher gears. If it's too far away, it will really struggle basically. 
So make sure you get that adjustment just right. Now with the B screw adjusted correctly, you can now check if your gear indexing works correctly because you still might need to make a fraction of adjustment to that upper limit for that big lower sprocket there. So run back down the gears and it should correlate to one click per gear. Is it working? Brilliant. If it's not hopping up or it's not going down, you will need to make just a bit of a fine adjustment to that limit. And in which case, then job's a good one. There you go, so we've made most of the adjustments to the derailleur to make sure it works and get your indexing working. There's two more things to go into. One is the constant adjustment you'll need to make. We'll get to that in a sec. And the other one is the cage lock, which we haven't covered yet. Now the cage lock is a little button here and it basically protrudes out the back and it locks the cage in place. This makes it dead easy to remove the wheel from the bike. You'd simply rotate the cage forwards, press the button and you see it will hold the cage completely locked out. Genius feature. Now, if you are struggling to make that adjustment on the smaller sprocket at the back, you can lock the cage out and it can actually give you a slightly more clean line of sight. If something's bent, this will expose it. So that's a good one to go back to if you have been struggling. Now, the last thing to say is about the constant adjustment. With any set of gears, whether you're using a new cable or even an old system like this one that I have just made some adjustments to, there'll be a settling in period. People will tell you this is where your cable stretches. It's not. This is where the cables, the outer cables that is, settle into the sheaths, into the housing, into the ferrules, into parts of the frame. As you move around on the bike, you go through the suspension, everything creaks and moves around. As this naturally happens, there will be some slack that's created and you'll need to compensate by just dialing in that barrel adjuster. But you can do that instead of wasting time doing it in the stand, you can go for a ride, go through all those gears, make sure everything's working as nicely as you hope. And you probably find after a first proper ride, maybe two or three rides, that you might have a slight delay shifting up from the bottom sprocket into the first one up. And you might just need half a turn or a quarter of a turn just to add a bit more tension on the system. And really that's about it. It's a very simple system. It works on cable tension and just some limit screws essentially. Dead simple, I love cable gears. Hopefully this video has been useful for you. Again, it's just a specialist video for those needing to adjust a SRAM derailleur. We've got the one for the Shimano derailleur in the comments underneath and it might be floating around over there somewhere or over there. And there's also the one on the shed bike where I fix up an old bike. It's a great video to watch. It might inspire you to do up that old bike in the garage or the loft, make a few quid from it, give it to a friend, give it to a charity. It's a good thing to do and it'll help you understand working on bikes a bit more. Can't be a bad thing. Any suggestions for videos, don't forget to let us know. Uh, let us know in those comments. Thanks for watching.